support us on Patreon to get access to member-exclusive benefits and first dibs on the latest Manchester United news. Um... Right, let's quickly get on to the player ratings now um, section. So, um, most of these guys aren't going to get above a six, to be honest. Um, so, with this, with, with um, I think the exception of of, of Romero, um, I'll give Romero a seven. And I know it's, I know it's, um, I know we didn't have a lot to do, but to be honest, he made two very fantastic saves that basically um, kept us in the game. And I've always said for a while, I've said, you know. Um, Romero's distribution is is okay. I don't think Romero and they have necessarily great distribution, but Romero is also a short stopper, and um, and there is a confidence about him. And I've always said, you know, give him that competition, give him that give give De Gea that competition. Um, like you said, he, Romero made two fantastic saves um, that kept us in the uh, game. That one, I think, from the corner, which was literally point blank, um, and that goes in. So for me. He for me, he's my man of the match. I know people obviously say Brandon Williams play well. He did, um, although um, Tremo, uh, Troyore kept on going down his side and putting in crosses in. He, 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 he Brandon Williams didn't have a lot of help, but for me, my man of the match anyway goes to, to to this guy because basically he's the reason why we have a replay. Even though in my personal opinion, I didn't want a replay. You know, so there we go. Um, Harry Maguire, um, I don't know, five, um, I don't, actually, I don't think, I think both Harry Maguire and Lindelof had an okay-ish game, um, I was a bit concerned with Harry Maguire, given the fact that he, you know, he could have easily, um, he could easily been injured, and then, you know, you're, you're crapping yourself, because we have City on Tuesday, and if Harry Maguire's injured, well, we'll see, because Oli could throw a screw and say Harry Maguire's going to be out, in which case, Phil Jones has to come in. Phil Jones, Victor Lindelof, and you know that that's that's just a travesty. Um, but I'm hoping that Twan CB will be fit. Uh, I think I'm going to be posting action injury report um, maybe tomorrow um, to update everyone on our injury crisis because hopefully we should be getting Twan CB and Eric Bailly back fairly soon, which will be a boost certainly from our centre back pairing, <coughs> and also because I think that both Twan C and Eric Bailly need a run in this squad because I think they offer something a bit more than Maguire and Lindelof do. Not that I think Maguire and Lindelof have been terrible, but certainly in the context of this game, um, I, I don't think they made to do There was a time Maguire did want to get the ball out, want to play a pass. And that is the thing I, I like about Maguire is that, um, and Lindelof is that they are ballers. They do want to pass the ball forward. It's just the problem is that they have no creativity in front of them. You put Maguire and Lindelof in a city in Liverpool, and they will play, and they will play well passing the ball forward. But <coughs> sorry, with no creativity in front of them, I just don't see. I just don't see happening. Um, <coughs> sorry, just reading again some of your comments. Um, let's have a look. Um, Tim Robertson. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Georgia B. Sad to say, Matt's most creative number ten, despite having no legs anymore. Pogba's heart is in Spain or Italy. Jamie, yeah, this club is one from top to bottom, never-ending cycle. And Rasmus A, by, by the way, what do you think about Oli's response to Van Persie's comments? I will post it, be posting a video about that hopefully soon. Um, Rasmus, Don Magna, Klopp has a pedigree, a pass and play, top man manager, and a good eye on the transfer market, and has helped improve average players like Henderson, Morris, etc. And people say, give Oli time. I mean, Klopp even did that over, um, you know, um, years. You know, look at Arteta, look at how he even improved David Luiz. And, that's just, and he's only been there for three weeks. You know, look at Brendan Rodgers. He's improved the Leicester players. So I'm not even talking about years or two. Look at those, even those two managers have made an instant impact in, you know, maybe Rashford has gotten better, possibly. I don't know. But, you know, we'll see, I guess. Um, Lee Royale Johnson says, Oli, as I've got not, I've not got a clue. He's like a fish out of water. And just goes to show that people above know nothing about football. That is why we are in the uh, position that we are. Um, could not agree. Um, so moving on. Um, sorry, but firstly, um, Victor Lindelof, um, Lindelof, um, I think same as Guy as a five. Um, like I said in many post reactions before, I just don't, I don't see these two as a world class centre back pairing for United going, or even a top four centre class pairing. To be honest, the communication between the two just doesn't seem to be there. Um, and I mean, they did all right in this game. I think we did defend well, so I can't really. Um, 
State Lindelof and, and Maguire too much, but I didn't really see much of a difference between the two. Um, aside from maybe one or two things, but the offense was particularly stand out because it was one of those types of games. So Lindelof gets gets a five, just like Maguire, in my opinion. Um, Ashley Young, um, Ashley Young, I'll give Ashley Young a six. Um, despite what everyone seems to say about Ashley Young, um, I'll give Ashley Young a six. Now, and because when he comes in. When Ash Young has come in, he's done a job. Um, like we didn't actually get that much bother. We got a few ones, but we didn't get a lot of bother down his side. I think if anything, Trio and Jimenez soon after went down uh, Williams' side because maybe maybe Williams a bit more experienced. Um, I bet obviously they didn't. And even the cross where I think Jimenez um, hits the post that actually came from Williams' side. So um, Ash Young a few times intelligent, actually buying fouls, was able to actually. Um, uh, to see, see balls out. So, you know, to be honest, I know, I know, Alastair Young gets a lot of stick, a lot of hate, um, and a lot of, um, you know, he shouldn't be at the club. Um, but in the games that he's been called upon, he's been, he's done all right, you know. So, I think for me, for Ashley Young, for good one-off games, good one-off cup games that we need, um, against teams against opposition that maybe is not, is not, is not particularly great. Um, I think, you know. I, I I sorry about that. I think that uh, he can come in. He can do a job. Um, so you play Ash Young in the Europa League. You play Ash Young in in the FA Cup. You play Ash Young in in the, in the League Cup and 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 rest those players. Um, so yeah, I give Ash Young a, a solid six to be honest. I actually think he had a great game and he he's had a, almost a consistent six performance and appearances that he's come in. So let me know what you think about the comments. Who you think your man of the match was as, as difficult as as, as as this is in this game. Uh, moving on, Brandon Williams. I think Brandon Williams gets. Um, so, so I, I'll give Brandon Williams a six, but for different reasons for Ashley Young. I think that again, as a young kid, um, as someone just coming into spray, I think he he's got potential. Um, I think that a lot of people are saying he's better than Luke Shaw. Um, yes or no? It's difficult because we'll have to see him against against tough opposition. He hasn't really played against. I think as tough opposition yet as far as i'm aware one or two wins but not but not obviously and not consistently um and from what i can see i definitely think it's worth a shot of alternating him and I, and certainly brandon williams needs to be needs to be starting the openly games cup competitions um i would almost be keen to say um premier league games as well um but i don't think you know ollie has his favorites and i don't think he's going to drop sure um so I anticipate that Williams will start against City at least um, and see who goes. He's got a potential. You know, I did think that Troy was doing him a few times down that left hand side. Um, he dealt with him relatively well, but there are a few instances. I do think, and actually this is a point actually, and let me know what you think in the comments. I thought it was a penalty. Um, I thought I thought that was a penalty. I 100% thought that that was a penalty. And I know a lot of people say, oh, it's soft. Oh, it's sort of... The referees themselves said... They didn't feel there was enough contact for it to be a penalty. And the way that I see that is that, you know, that I don't understand that statement, you know, because if you can give marginal offside by an armpit here via VAR, then why isn't a bit of contact a penalty that makes you go down? I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. And how can you gauge what that contact is when you're not actually feeling the contact? You know, um, I don't know. It's it's very just it's very suspect. Um, I saw it. I, I just think that if there's contact in the box that puts you off getting more, then it's a penalty. Um, and for me, I think the doctor has done by, and I think if VAR, I don't think it's VAR. I think it's the referees. Um, and you know, people say clear and obvious, etc. Well, okay, armpit by minuscule is not clear and obvious, but you you, you give it as offside. But a small contact. The other thing as well is the fact that um, I've seen penalties given. You know, it, this is the kind of consistency with, with refereeing. Sometimes is that is that um, it, you can see a um, a penalty. I think there was one. I think the, the one I remember vividly was um, I think did Chelsea get the penalty? I think against Liverpool in the Super Cup. Similar touch to that. Small touch. It almost looked like even a dive. Minimal contact. It goes down. It's a penalty. So I don't know. I I, I don't know. I guess I guess. Maybe they thought that because um, there was minimal contact, you don't overturn the existing referee's decision. And the existing referee's decision was no penalty. But I don't know. I thought it was a penalty anyway. Um, contact is contact, as Tim Robertson has said. Um, but there you go. That said, um, um, that said, 
I don't want to be in the top, you know, do Liverpool beg for penalties? No. They score goals at Mane and Salah. Do City beg for penalties? Well, okay. Twice, 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 Pep. So um, maybe they do. <laughs> but, um, you know, what, what point I'm trying to make is that we should be scoring goals from, from, from things that aren't penalties. Um, uh, Don Magnet, Ollie's tactic, boot the ball to James and Rashford, and may glory be to God. <laughs> Standard. Uh, Jamie, um, Ye has a world class stop it in the in the first half. Um and uh and uh Jamie uh thinks that uh, Maguire should get a six, fair enough. Georgia B, you don't think it was a penalty, fair enough. But Tim uh but um Georgia B says contact doesn't mean a foul. Um yeah, I mean I'll put off end on this, this point, just so we want to play ratings. I, I think you're right, contact doesn't mean in mean a foul, but the issue here is I think the issue is with the technology that we have. You know, so um it's that because we have technology now where you can see that players had uh, contact, and yes, it's a contact sport, and the fact that there isn't any consistency. For me, VR came in to bring in consistency. And so if you have a scenario where in one game there is that amount of contact and a referee gives a penalty, I mean, this is the, this is the problem I have. It's more that it's more the fact that in one game that will be given as a penalty. VAR will check it, and because it's not clear and obvious, VAR will then say, we'll go, go with the on-field decision, and it'll still be a penalty. In this instance, the same situation, except the referee doesn't give it, and because it's not clear and obvious, therefore, it won't be a um, it won't be a penalty. And that's the inconsistency, I think, you know. So so there we go. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, moving on. Matic, and Matic gets a four for me. Um, I, I think that... Um, you know, um, we can't obviously let him go because we don't have any midfielders. Um, slow didn't really help our defense um, at all. I didn't really see many. At the very least, I'm expecting Matic to try and play passes forward, sideways passing. It was almost like he's, he was under Mourinho, except worse. Boy, well, he's worse because he's older. Um, I don't really know what Matic really offered, really, aside from exposing our defense and not really helping our front from the either. Um, I just, I just don't, really don't know what Matic, which Matic brought. Um, just there's enough said, really enough said. I mean, I, I can't even think of specific points of some of these players because the game was so dead, and I really don't know what Matic offered, um, in this game, um, other than sideways passing. You know, he didn't, he, he wasn't creating, he didn't create anything. So, so there you go, Matic. Um, Andres Pereira. Um, I think Pereira also gets a free. Well, get, I think he gets a free for me, Pereira, because um, Pereira um, seems to. Um, I I just don't really know what Pereira seems. to... I mean, he's obviously playing in a deeper role now, which isn't his position, and I think a lot of so there is that. I guess um, I did say that people no there wouldn't be anybody really getting over six in these match ratings, um, and if. Ashley Young and Brandon was getting sixes, then Pereira isn't getting anywhere near that. So he's getting a free for me. Um, yes, he's playing slightly deeper than he usually plays. Um, but again, where's the creativity? Where's the forward pass? Much like Matthew. The only reason why they matter is because much like Marcus Rashford and a few of the players, it's that composure. There were a few instances with these players where, and I'll have a big rant about this, but, you know, speculative efforts... You know, I, 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 let me know in the comments, guys. But do you remember a time um, when, when Manchester United actually scored from a long range effort? You know, let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know in the comments. Like the vid, like the vid, like the vid, by the way. But um, let me know in the comments, guys. Do you remember a time when Manchester United actually scored um, from a from from a long range, uh, uh, a long range effort? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't remember when they did. So why is it that when we can't break teams down, instead of like looking for that creative pass, instead of players, and this is this is part of the problem, is, is that um, our players are very static. No one is making any runs off the ball. No one is, uh, and no one is wanting to come and collect the ball. So this is the problem here: is that you have situations where you're supposed to have your creative midfielders in either a Matic or a Pereira. They're not looking to make that pass, and the players that they want to pass to are either not present not in space or not making a run. So sideways, 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 sideways. You know, you look at, you compare it to Liverpool and it's like, right, even just from the defence, Van Dijk, P 
pings it forward because he, he sees from how many yards away that Firmino's making a run. That's intelligent. That's intelligent pay. And Firmino's going to space. Boom. Goal. End of. Two plays. That's it. Manchester United, the, our midfielders are, don't seem to have that vision. Maguire tries sometimes. Um, but again, because their players are not in space, not making the run, the amount of times that I saw a Williams or even Nash Young for that matter, or even Daniel James putting crosses into the ball, no, into the box, sorry, no one's there. No one's anticipating. No one wants to make the effort. No one wants to come come in. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, um, Pereira for me, for, for me, Pereira gets, 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 gets a free and, 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 the two or three speculative efforts that that he that he tried to say, oh, you know what, let it just kick from out. I, I just, I'd rather almost United pass, 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 and try and at least try and cover and try and create something than the amount of speculative efforts that we basically had on goal. It's which was which was a joke. Um, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, if just reading some of your comments before I go in. Um, Football fan fever, shout out, mate. Uh, wan should have a game at CB. Possibly. I don't think it would change anything, though. Um, George B. Andreas like those 35 your sorts in row 35 for some strange reason. Um, Don, Don Magna, keep your friends close, be enemies closer. Based on this famous quote, I find truth in Riola's comments. Fair, fair play. Rashi's free kick. Uh, was that Did Rashi take a free kick? I thought that was um, one matter. Which free kick that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. From scoring from free kicks. Yeah. yeah okay. Rashford. So Rashford's free kick obviously was from from a long way out. Yes. Um. But that's probably. But that seems to be one of the exception than the rule compared to the amount of obviously shots that we've that we've attempted speculatively. Um. Chris Matig, Fred, and Rashford need to stop blasting the ball from thirty yards out, which I agree with. Um. But George, we can't remember one from open play. When everyone's shooting from outside the box, it's the fault of poor coaching. Um, I agree. No one United is the MS. and I agree because if you're doing speculative efforts, it's 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 often out of frustration. Um, let's let's move on. Daniel James. Um, I think Daniel James gets. Um, I'll give Daniel James a five. Um, Daniel James. I don't think has have been having the greatest of games for a while. Um, because again, I think people have realised that if Daniel James does not have space, um, to run into, then he he doesn't become effective. That said. Daniel James put at least two or three good crosses into that box that no one attacked. Um, and there's not a lot else you can do, you know, someone playing on the wing. Um, so that's something that is an ongoing problem. Um, the other thing, I guess, and this is what Rio Ferdinand said, which I thought was interesting, is that you can, is that our wingers, you know, Martial does this when he comes on in, in from the left. Um, but, <coughs> and he's probably the only one, in my opinion, that does it. Um, but our wingers don't actually come inside um, or, like, anticipate the ball, anticipate the cross, etc. You know, it's, it's incredible. And I hate bringing up Liverpool again, but it's just it's just because of how so far behind. But it's incredible that Salah and Mane are not number nines. They're not centre, centre attacking, uh, not CAMs, attacking midfielders. They're wingers. And yet, look at the amount of goals they're scoring as wingers. United's wingers... Need to come in and need to piss. Well, not always, of course. They need to we need we need width as well, but they do need to anticipate the ball sometimes. So if Daniel James is, is going for a cross, who's on the other side? Is it Pereira on that side? Is it is it Lingard? Is it Rashford? Come in, come inside, anticipate that cross because that's how you're going to get goals. You're not going to get goals by just staying on the wing because every single time a James crosses the ball in or um, a Pereira crosses the ball in, and there's only maybe. Greenwood in the box and maybe Mat Matic in the box anticipating the cross, then nothing's going to happen. And you're going to have eight Wolves players, as the case may be, they'll just clear the clear the ball. Where are the, the front men coming in and anticipating those things? And that's something that, again, needs to be coached, uh, and but it's apparently not being coached, and that's and that, that's a big problem. Um, Teeth Chong, um, Teeth Chong for... Um, he again, I think, a few times put in some good crosses, but I think he lost the ball a few times. Um, he's playing someone that feels a bit rusty. I feel that Teve Chong, um, much like Gomez, they need loan moves. Um, I don't think they're going to get loan moves because of our squad is in such um, dire straits in terms of depth. And I have a feeling that if we don't get any transfers in January, we'll need these players for sake of injuries. 
so Chong may end up playing just merely for the fact that we won't have anyone else who can play um, due to injury or due to due to, due to losses. So um, for me, Chong 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 um, didn't have the great greatest of games, if, if I'm perfectly honest, and hasn't really had a great game United for, for a while. And I just feel it needs needs a lone move, if I'm honest. But much like with Daniel James, he did put in a few decent crosses in. And if we actually have, um, <coughs> sorry, the players to anticipate the things, then he could have got an assist today. Um, but that that wasn't the case. Um, uh, Don Magna, Oli versus RVP, who would win in a boxing match for charity to raise transfer funds? <laughs> they should go for that. Uh, they should go for that. I think, I think Oli just... I think actually, I think uh, Bob and Van Persie might still be a bit, uh, a bit, a bit, a bit out of it. Um, and George B says again, that's normal to coaching. Nobody seems to react to crosses. Nobody attacks the far post. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to see. I would like to see um, a. Um, I'd like to see actually a coaching video from United at some point in the future, um, just to come out, um, just something leaked, just so we can watch what the coaching is. You know, because I, I, I like to, I like to see how how they are coached. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, matter, um, pfft, matter. As he says, that most intelligent player, but and he did have, and obviously the the free kick that was that was that was pretty good. I think he all, he sent the keeper the wrong way. If it just coming a bit, um, for uh, a, a bit inside, that would have been in. Um, I think he does stay on free kicks. A much better free kick take, taker than Pereira. I think. If you're talking about free kick takers, you probably have Pereira, sorry, Fred, Mata, and Rashford are the free. Everyone else can basically just leave, was, was what I would say. Um, but Mata, Mata, I'll give an, I'll give Don Magna, Mata, I'll give a four. Um, like I said, he wasn't, I don't think it was the worst player on the pitch, although all these, any one of these players could get for anywhere from about a three to a six, to be honest. It was just that type of game, that boring to watch. But he tried. And he came to the squad, uh, um, and uh, it's just that obviously Matter can only really play for sixty minutes, and he was it was tasked to play for more. So, so there you go. Um, and lastly, Mason Greenwood. Um, Mason Greenwood. Um, Mason Greenwood. Um, Mason Greenwood five and a half. I give Mason Greenwood five and a half. Um, he did get some opportunities, um, and like I've said several times, Mason Greenwood has considerably more composure than some of the players around him, i.e. Pereira and Rashford. Um, but other than that, he didn't really do... He was playing as number nine, and it is very, very difficult to play as a number nine sometimes, um, especially if you're back against goal. Um, and Greenwood, certainly in previous games, has been more so been playing off the right than in front as a number nine, but obviously Martial wasn't there. Um, if Martial was playing and wasn't ill and Green was on the right then maybe you might have seen something different um, I think Greenwood and Daniel James interchanging on the right is probably the way to go from the future to be honest um, to just give competition on that side um, and and see what happens with that um, but like I said he's had better games um, but again Green was the type of player where if he's got the right coach if there's the right coaching staff around him he can blossom into someone good um, and that's and that's um that's a shame. That's a shame. You know, two-footed, can finish, and has composure above his years, but it's just not getting the right coaching right now. Um, Don Magnamata's voice is like Spanish show Piscali. <laughs> Mason had some good technicals on the ball with absolutely no one moving around him in space. I agree, and it's that space thing again, as we said. Um, and the thing that, that, the positive thing that, that Lingard can, sorry, not Lingard, um, Mason Green, definitely not Lingard, can give you is, is the fact that he, um, that even though there's no space, he can still create something. And that's the difference. You know, I remember uh, when we played Everton, I think, um, Everton and even Newcastle, those games when, but more so Everton, when there were like 10 Everton players, I threw needle, and that goal was just excellent. He had no right to score that goal, but he found the space and he took it. And that's the difference between Green, I see Greenwood and quite a lot of other players. Um, Martial at times can do it, um, but... Greenwood can find that space. Um, he's done it before and he can do it again. Um, and so, fair enough. But in this instance, I, I give him a five and a half. 